There are many hazards to be aware of in boat yards and the appropriate action should be taken to minimize the risk to you and those around you. Everyone within the reach of spray particles is at risk, including spray hands, potmen, cherry pick drivers, other trades working in the environment such as fitters, supervisors or technical service representatives, and scaffolders or cleanup teams may come into contact with dry spray once painting has finished. Therefore, the utmost care should be taken to minimize exposure from particle sprays both to the application team and others working in the yard. There are many hazardous substances involved with spraying such as paints, reducers, equipment cleaners, degreasers, paint removers and surface treatment products. Each of these can damage your health should you be exposed to them. Short-term symptoms can include irritant contact dermatitis, burns to skin and eyes, vomiting, irritation to nose, throat and lungs, and headaches, dizziness and fatigue. However, in the long term, exposure to these substances can cause allergic contact dermatitis, occupational asthma, reproductive system damage, kidney or liver damage, painter's syndrome, and possibly cancer. Working in the yard, people can be exposed to vapors, dust or dry spray, spray mist which is not visible, and solvents. The route of entry into the body is usually via the inhalation of dust or aerosol spray, though there's also the potential of ingestion by swallowing. The use of flammable materials in spray painting increases the risk to you and those around you. With this in mind, the following ignition sources should be eliminated from the spray area. Electrical sparks and arcs, the discharge of static electricity from poorly earthed equipment, electrical short circuits, naked flames, lit cigarettes, cigars and pipes, portable battery equipment, hot surfaces like wires and metals, equipment which could produce sparks like grinding wheels, and exothermic chemical reactions. You should avoid direct contact with hazardous substances. Exposure to the skin and eyes can arise from spray activities or via contact with paint or freshly painted surfaces. This can lead to an acute burning sensation on the eyes, while skin contact with paint and solvents can lead to acute irritant dermatitis, chronic allergic contact dermatitis or defatting of the skin. Due to the very high pressures involved during airless spray paint application, paint injection injuries can occur. Paint injected into the body is extremely serious. Urgent surgical treatment is needed, as if the injury is treated inadequately, amputation may be a possibility. There are a few simple things to consider in order to avoid injuries during spraying. When the equipment is pressurized, never look directly at the spray tip or bring the spray tip into close proximity with any part of the body. Never point a spray gun directly at anyone. Never place fingers over the spray tip. No one should carry out airless spraying unless fully trained in the correct use of the equipment, the hazards involved in spraying and the necessary action to be taken in the event of an accident. All equipment should be earthed. There's a potential danger of static electricity so you mustn't take any chances. Chlorinated solvents must never be sprayed. Air hoses should be secure before spraying operations are started. Lock the spray gun trigger before passing the gun to someone else. Depressurize equipment when not in use. Many things that are to be spray painted have complex shapes where the sprayer has to stretch, twist, bend or hold the spray gun in a static position above head height. This places the body under strain and can lead to manual handling injuries. Spray painting equipment can be very noisy and can induce deafness. With this in mind, sources of noise should comply with local regulations. Ear protection is recommended in circumstances with excessive noise and should always be worn. In case of an emergency, procedures are needed to deal with leaks, spills and uncontrolled releases of hazardous materials. Procedures should cover the cleanup and disposal of these materials along with personal protection 
and any local regulatory requirements. It's crucial that all personnel should be appropriately trained in local emergency procedures.